My name is Elizabeth Watts. I work at the Pajarito Environmental Education Center, otherwise known as PEAK. And today, together with the Department of Public Utilities, we are bringing you a virtual field trip on electricity. Now, you may have taken a field trip to the Nature Center back when we could visit places. Um, and that's run by PEAK as well or taking a passport hike. But today we're gonna to be talking about electricity because this is something that uses up some of our natural resources. And so we want to talk about where does our electricity come from and how can we conserve it? Now you've probably all used electricity at some point already today. And in fact, you should have a worksheet that says guided notes on it. And I would like you right now to pause this video and to go find three things that you have used um, with electricity so far today. Okay, did you get your three things? Okay, and you can write them on your guided notes there. Um, it may be something like you turned on a light bulb. That's something that uses electricity and we do it almost every day. Um, another thing type of thing I found in my house was a hair dryer. And a hair dryer uses electricity, plug it into the wall, and then we turn it on. We get sound, we get heat, we get um, air movement. And all of those things are different forms of energy. Electricity is a form of energy. Motion is a form of energy. Heat is a form of energy. There are a lot of different forms of energy. And electricity is one of those forms. And we all use it every day. And we need to learn where does it come from and how do, a lot of times people say we need to conserve energy. So what does that mean? And what are some ways we can go about doing that? So in order to talk about electricity, we are going to start with magnets, actually, because magnets and electricity are actually related. So you've probably all played with magnets at some point. Here are some magnets here. We have three magnets and they are all repelling each other. And even if I push them together, they push apart. So there's a couple of things here. Magnets repel each other the, um, if they have the same poles. But what do you think is going to happen if I turn this one over? Ah, so those magnets are attra attracting each other. So they attract and repel. So that's one of the key things about magnets. The other key thing is that they act at a distance. We don't, they don't need to touch each other in order to make something else move. So magnetism works at a distance and it attracts and repels. And it has to do with um, the electrons on the atoms. And that's what electricity is too. It's moving electrons. And so if you put some electricity through a wire, you can actually make a magnet. We're gonna do that activity together on another day where we're gonna make an electromagnet. We're gonna put electricity through a wire and we are gonna make a magnet just by having the electricity run through a wire around a piece of metal. You can also use a magnet to make electricity. So we're gonna make um, use electricity to make a magnet. You can use a magnet to make electricity. And part of this is all related to how motors work and motors and generators. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit right now. Here we have an example of a simple motor. There are magnets right here. And I can take those out. And you can see that they stick together. Okay, so those are magnets on either side. And then we have an electromagnet here. So when I hook up electricity, it goes through these copper colored wire coils and it makes a magnet. And this magnet pushes away that magnet and it turns. And then it gets over here and this magnet pushes away that electromagnet, so that turns into motion or spin. So we're converting electrical energy into motion. So I'm gonna hook this up and you can see this start to turn. 
So it's pretty loud, so it's also making sound energy. Okay, this was our motor that we saw. I showed you this one so you could see the inside. Now, this is another motor, but it's kind of all the parts are hidden inside here. But it does the same thing. If I hook it up to electricity and turn the switch here, we get motion. So that's like the fan that was turning on the other motor we had. So electricity goes through the motor and turns into motion. And that's what a motor does. Okay. But now, with this very same thing, if instead of electricity, if I hook this up to a light bulb and I turn this, this same thing that was a motor turning electricity into motion will turn motion into electricity. Okay, so I have a little light here. It's called an LED. If any of you've ever played with snap circuits, you may recognize this. But I'm going to hook it up to this same motor slash generator. I am going to turn this and it's going to turn on. So I am generating electricity here. And it's the same thing. It's just like a motor that turns electricity into motion. It can turn motion into electricity. So here is our generator slash motor again. And we saw previously that if we put electricity into this, we can make this turn. But if we turn this, we can make electricity. So the question is, is this how we make our electricity? In Los Alamos, do we have a bunch of little kids turning cranks to generate electricity? Uh, no, <laughs> that's not the way it works. But we do use something else to turn a generator, which then produces electricity for us. We use things like water, it's called hydropower. So water falls from a dam and you may have seen like pictures of a big water wheel where water falls, it turns something and that makes electricity or generates electricity. You can also do this with wind. If you had a big fan blade here and it was a windy day blowing um, your fan around, that's gonna turn your generator and again, generate electricity. This is also the way coal-fired plants work. They burn the coal, it produces steam, which turns a turbine, and then that turbine turns the generator, and again, you generate electricity. Now, we have a couple different kinds of um, energy sources. Coal and things like natural gas, those are called non-renewable energy sources. And the reason they're non-renewable is that we are using them up faster than they could be produced. Theoretically, you could produce more coal, but the coal we're burning right now was produced several hundred million years ago. And so we're not gonna produce any more um, in the earth before we use up what we already have. Things like wind and solar and water, they are considered renewable energy sources because they um, are renewable. <laughs> they, they are considered renewable because they keep going. You have, um, you're always going to have wind, um, but the problem is that sometimes it's variable, right? It's not always windy. Sometimes it's super windy. Sometimes it's a little windy. Um, and that's one of the problems with renewable energy sources is they usually aren't constant. We have a lot of solar energy in New Mexico during the day, but often we, our demand for electricity is the biggest during the nighttime. And currently we have no good way to store that electricity to, made during the day to use at night. So renewables pr usually produce less pollution. If you think about with your generator, um, if you had a wind turbine that turned this fan and generated electricity, there's no pollution there. 
there's no carbon emissions there. Whereas if you burn coal to turn the turbine, to turn the generator, you're going to produce a lot of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. So in general, in Los Alamos, our two main sources are coal still and hydroelectric power. And so it is important to try to reduce the amount of electricity we use or conserve energy because then we aren't using up some of those non-renewable resources. So what are some ways that you can conserve electricity? And I would like you to think of a few and write them down on your guided notes page, some ideas of ways that you could conserve energy. And I may be coming to some of your classes um, to do a virtual visit since we still can't do in-person visits. And we can discuss some of these ideas you have for ways that we can conserve energy. Now the county is trying to conserve energy. We would like by the year 2040, which is in 20 more years, to be carbon neutral. And that means we won't produce any greenhouse gases. We want all of our energy sources to not produce greenhouse gases. And so that means more reliance on things like wind and solar and water. You may notice though, some years we have a lot of rain and some years we don't have a lot of rain. And that's one problem with relying on a lot of hydropower or water power is it can be greatly affected by the drought conditions we might be in. So again, write down on your sheet some ways that you think you could conserve energy. Um, and we will talk about those when I come to your class to build an electromagnet. So you're gonna build the one part in this motor um, that has where the wires are wrapped around metal and that we can make a magnet. Now we're gonna start our field trip, part of our virtual field trip and take a tour of how our electricity is generated here in Los Alamos. Here is a picture of Abiquiu Dam. You may have been to Abiquiu Lake sometime and may have driven past this and not even known that that was helping produce some of the electricity you use. So here is the high side where the water is. The water will flow through the dam. It will turn a turbine, which will turn a generator and produce electricity that we use here in Los Alamos. Here's a picture of some high school students that got to take an actual field trip into the hydroelectric plant. Now, obviously we can't go do that right now, but we have a couple pictures from inside. And here's a picture of um, one of the turbines that turns and then helps generate electricity. But from this, it's kind of hard to see exactly how all of this works. Here's another picture of one of the generators that is producing the electricity. But again, it's kind of hard to see all the parts, but luckily with our virtual field trip here, we can look at some of those inside parts. Another place that Los Alamos gets hydroelectric power from is El Vado. And they took some pictures when they were replacing some of the parts inside. So here's one of the parts. This is a part with the electromagnets and here it is on a giant truck. So that gives you an idea of just how big this is. Here's the stator being unloaded from one of the trucks and you can see how it relates to the size of the people. And the stator is the part where the electricity is produced. It's the kind of similar to coils of wire. And in the middle of that will be a rotor with the magnets. And here's a picture of the rotor again, before it's unwrapped. This is where the parts will go. And you can see from the ladders down there at the bottom, just how big this is. Here's the first part being lowered into place. And then here comes the rotor. The orange parts there are the electromagnetic magnets. So the electromagnets use a little bit of electricity to make magnets, and then it's turned by the water flowing through the turbine, and then the motion produces more electricity. Here it is ready to go into place. 
And here it's being lowered into place. And again, you can see over to the left, there's a person in a hat. So you can just see how big this is as it's being lowered into place here. And again, this is a, something we cannot normally see even on a real field trip. So it's kind of fun that we can see it here through these pictures. All right, and here they are standing on top of it after it's been all lowered into place. But again, this shows you the size of these generators and this part in the center turns with the, mag with, the, with the electromagnets inside and it generates electricity in the wires that are surrounding it. And that's where some of our electricity comes from. Well, this wraps up our field trip for today. I thank you for watching and I hope you learned something about how electricity is generated and where it comes from here in Los Alamos. And I hope you think about some ways that at home you can save or conserve electricity. If you are watching this as part of a school class, um, you will get a kit for making an electromagnet. And for most of your classes, I may be visiting or another person may be visiting to help you make those kits and also to talk about energy conservation. We also have an outdoor activity for you to do to look at how animals use insulation to survive the winter. So hopefully there's a little bit of snow still outside and you can do that at home. So again, this is Elizabeth Watts for Peak and the DPU and thank you.